Plus, I'm working with computer paper, and this design is a, a little longer than a piece of paper. Uh, I make it in two pieces, and I don't cut it all the way out where they where they're going to attach until I'm ready to actually use the stencil. It makes it easier to transport. It's not going to flop flop all over on you. And take the first one down, and then just simply cut it. And take your second one, cut it, and then lay it in place and line up the two the two edges before you actually mask it off the outside to your wing or whatever you're uh, painting your uh, stencil. Now this little cartoon sun character is a place where you do multiple stencils for one uh, one figure or one part of a, a stencil. So what I did was I first cut out the outside of the flames, and that'll be the first thing that goes on, unless uh, you want to do a offset color. So what you do is you put down the offset color first, maybe say, you know, a light orange, very lightly misted around the outside. Then let it dry, take your stencil, and reposition your stencil. And it kind of gives you a three-dimensional shadowed look. Either go down, up, to one side or the other, or on an angle, however it looks best, you can move it around. And then do your background color. In this case, that would be the red. So now I just have basically red flames with a maybe an orange outline offset to one side, maybe you know an eighth of an inch or so, or even just turned a little bit to give it more of a, a kind of a flowing look. Then I, this, the next stencil I made was of the round circle of the face, the yellow color, and I just cut that out as my my round stencil for that. So that would go on next. And after it's dry, I want to put on the eyes and the mouth, which is this stencil. But if you notice, I took a marker and uh, made an outline of some of the flames, so that when I go to airbrush this on, and all I have is just the flames in a circle, I can put this on top and I can line it up so that it's facing the same, the right way. Now that might not matter if you're only doing one, but if you're doing one on this side of the plane and one on the other side, then you want them to look pretty much the same, so those little lines can be a good guide. So then I would do my black, which would be my whole eyes and the mouth, let that dry, and then I made a, another stencil with just the eyes, the centers. And again, I have the, the outline on there, so I'll put that on, mask it off, and then do my uh, uh, background color again, whether it's the yellow or you know whatever I want it to be, or a different color. But that way, I'm not trying to just do these little eyes and not knowing exactly where they go, making them you know a little bit off, which wouldn't matter again if you only had one. But if you want them to all look the same, you kind of need to know how to line them up like that. His eyes and all the flames face one way. Now, when he's on the other side of the plane. All you have to do is flip the stencil over and do the same thing again. Your background, the shadow if you if you like the shadow first, then the background, the face, the eyes, and then the center of the eyes, all in reverse. You can do that with any kind of a shape. Uh, lettering, of course, is always going to be facing the same way, so you can read it, unless you're doing it for a special effect and want it backwards, a mirror image. When you go to paint your stencil on, I'm going to give you a little demonstration here, give you an idea, basic idea of... Uh, things you can do and things to look out for. I made a little extra of the uh, lightning bolts that was originally from this sketch. And I'm just going to do it on the back of this case just so you can see. And it's very rough. I just want to give you an idea. First thing you would do is, would be to tape it into place. And again, using the painter's tape, lightly pressing it down. You don't want to peel off any paint or anything. Now the biggest problem with the stenciling in, uh, is the airflow lifting up the stencil. And uh, there's a couple ways you can avoid that. One would be to take your masking tape and tape off the edge of it that's away from you. Because what happens is when you spray in this direction, it's going to hold this side of it down and that will have a nice line. But, of course, it's going to lift up the back side. So if you do it one part, let it dry, carefully pull your tape off, and then turn go from the other angle and, sp and and paint it, it'll work fine. But now, again, you have to worry about it blowing under this way. So you could tape it off again. Not really a good idea on fresh paint. What's a lot easier is just to use like a piece of wood or a piece of cardboard to hold it down on the opposite side. And if you hold it down firmly, it's not going to lift it up and you'll get your first side done. And then you can turn it around. And I'll show you. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a offset background color on this, just to give you an idea of what some of the things you can do with these simple stencils. Um, 
an alternative to the cans, which obviously would be better, would be to use a airbrush at low pressure. In which case, something like this, I could just go straight on with an airbrush, and it would not lift very much at all. If I was careful, it wouldn't lift at all. Uh, a little bit of a lift sometimes isn't a big deal. It gives it a little bit of a, a shadow. Uh, it's not really a problem. But if you want nice, clean lines, now I'm going to do a uh, uh, another tip is to hold the can back a bit. Don't go too close because the closer you, closer you go, obviously, the more air you're going to have. So go back a bit. And I'm going to go lightly first, just on the bottom. Okay. Now I'm going to let that dry and then move the stencil. And this is going to be a really crappy demonstration because it is not sticking to this pencil box at all. But you'll get the idea. So now, after that's dry, take it off, and I have my, my bottom edge. Now I can reposition this. Of course, I'm not waiting until it's dry, just to show you. I'll reposition this up about maybe an eighth of an inch or so. Tape it down again and use my second color. And I'll just go straight down on this and see it'll be fine. If I, I could have just tailed it down again, but this is just a quick demonstration. And then pull it off. That is really pretty crappy, but <laughs> if you don't want to do a real big offset, you can do that too. See, this is actually a very large offset. I wasn't careful when I did it. Plus the paint was still wet. But even with that, it's kind of a cool effect. And then I can let that dry and take a different stencil put it on top. You can layer your stencils and get some uh, really neat looks. Here's an example on a wing I did for my mud duck that I showed in pretty much in detail in an, uh, one of my videos. And I used stencils. In this case, they were just uh, cut out of paper and then the edges were taped. And you can see how I saved the inside piece to do an offset. Rather than taking the whole stencil and moving it, I did, taped my stencil on, took the, took the cutout and moved the cutout and did each side all the way around to give it kind of a, you know, like a three-dimensional shadow look. And if you notice the colors, how this went from orange to a reddish orange, and the yellow also, and even the black changed to like a grayish, uh, almost a candy black, that's because the color I used in this, over top of these other colors, were, which were laid down first, was a candy coat, which is basically a clear coat with a small amount of pigment, so that it's uh, slightly transparent and just changes the color a little bit. And uh, here's an example of where I, I don't know how much you can see that, but... Uh, where I did just an offset with the same stencil in a different color, just to give it a few lines here and there. You can see some in there. And that gives you a little bit of like a shadow offset look. 